first game of week six of the college football season from Mobile, Alabama. A Sunbelt matchup between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Jaguars of South Alabama. Kevin Brown, Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware, delighted to kick off week six. It's going to be a terrific week of college football. We started tonight with two of the youngest programs in FBS. This is a throwback type game. Should be a lot of running, particularly with this triple option for Georgia Southern. Yeah, it is. Inside, outside, you, you got all kinds of, of, uh, of, of ways they're going to attack you defensively. It's tough to get ready for it. And when you have a full week, it's tough to get ready on a short week. 81% of their, uh, their offense comes on rushing attempts. They don't throw it a lot. But when they do, it's effective. The quarterback doesn't even throw it a lot. Shy Words, who's an excellent runner, just back last week from a week one injury. Logan Wright and the Oklahoma State transfer J.D. King. The big three-headed monster to start, and they get back maybe their most dynamic playmaker, Wesley Kennedy. Yeah, it's their version of the big three, so to speak. And then you add Wesley Kennedy to this mix. He is a playmaker, a guy that adds an element of speed to this offense. So we're at Lad People Stadium, which is the home of the Senior Bowl, where you see a lot of future NFL players. There might be one in the South Alabama backfield. Trey Minner's not a big guy, but he's a guy a lot of folks think has a future in the league. Yeah, I liken him to a kind of a Christian McCaffrey type in the way that they use him here at South Alabama. He is a bono, he is an excellent running back. We know he can carry the football. He catches it well out of the backfield. Excellent pass protection, but they use him on punts and kickoff returns. His workload will be huge tonight for South Alabama. Pretty steamy night. The temperature has dropped to 90 degrees part of a continuous heat wave here in the state of Alabama and in the American Southeast South Alabama won the toss and deferred to the second half Georgia Southern will start with the ball Wesley Kennedy just back from missing the first four games for academic reasons he is deep and ready to receive off the left foot of Diego Wajardo. And in the end zone, Kennedy will let it bounce for a touchback. Yeah, I think for South Alabama, it all starts when you're facing the triple option. You have to stop that man, Logan Wright, the big fullback or a guy that they're going to feed it to in the middle. If you can't do that, it will be a long night defensively. Here is Shy Words, the Georgia Southern quarterback. A captain for the second year, a third-year starter. 133 passes without an interception. He does not put it in the air much. Only his third game of the year after an injury in the opener against LSU. On first down, it is a handoff. Logan Wright, their leading rusher on the year, 248 yards, 5.5 per carry, and he plunges ahead for a couple. Yeah, and this is something that Greg Stewart, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday. They want to get Georgia Southern to third down, third and medium, and they have a shot. If you allow them third and short, uh, that's when the problems arise for this South Alabama defense. Words will pitch it, and it's a bad pitch that was picked up by Matt LaRoche. A missed exchange and forget third and medium. It will be third and very long for Georgia Southern, loss of five. And you've got to be a tough guy to play quarterback at uh, Georgia Southern. Shea Words got level there by, by Jeffrey Watley, and that's just one of those, hey, I'm going to be here for a while throughout the evening so just just get used to me being around you tackles for loss leader Watley 99 in red Georgia Southern a 10 and 3 team last year off to just a 1 and 3 start and they have been one of the worst teams in the country on third down should be a free play here and words throws it out of bounds looks like South Alabama jump first and show some experience going with a hard count but kind of barking signals at the line of scrimmage. Got South Alabama to jump off sides. You get a free five and make it a little bit more of a manageable type third down situation here. Wayne Winkler, our referee with the offside call. Yeah, watch the offensive line. They don't move. They see the hard count. Once the D line comes across, the ball is snapped. And now Shea Wirtz knows that he's got something. He's got a free play. Why not put it up? They didn't even move after he threw it. <laughs> they stayed in their stances. 
Madam Tussauds, Georgia Southern offensive line. So third down and eight, it is a run play. It's the first touch for Wesley Kennedy, and he gets most of the eight, but not enough. Nick Mobley, the leading tackler with a stop, and Georgia Southern will punt. Yeah, he comes back and adds the ability to run inside zone, as well as getting to the edge. Wesley Kennedy, a big-time playmaker. They're trying to unleash here early, but he's up a little bit short so far here early. South Alabama defensively passing the test. South Alabama bench that first morning. South Alabama just got hit with a sideline warning. That's not a penalty, that's just a warning for now. Anthony Beck will kick it, the redshirt freshman to the dangerous Trey Minter, who has not uncorked a good punt return yet this year, but is always a threat. A good punt. Minter will return it from across the 20, stumble ahead to the 25, a 46-yard punt and a stumble ahead of a four-yard return. So, we'll look at the South Alabama offense and the redshirt sophomore Cephas Johnson. First-year starter, Andre. He only started his final year in high school football. The coaches think he will be a great player at some point. He just doesn't have the reps at this point. Yeah, he seems to get better each and every week that he takes the field. Just needs to play. They love his work ethic. Big frame at 6'5", 220 pounds. Handed off to Trey Minter into the pile on first down. And Minter is shoved back by a host of Georgia Southern players. And Minter, we keep an eye on him. The touch count for him is about 20, a little bit over 20 touches for the game. And that's, I think last game it was 26 to be exact. He's the team's MVP. He's what makes it go. He's the engine of this offense. Seventh in FBS at all-purpose yards per game. It was eighth last year. He'll take it again. And Minner is tripped up across the 30-yard line. A gain of four yards, Randy Wade on the stop. A couple of nice blocks by the left side of the South Alabama offensive line. And how do you help your defense? You move the chains against the triple option offense. Keep them on the sideline. Let them get cold a little bit. Do some complimentary football here. Georgia Southern has mightily struggled on third down defense as well. 45% against. Jaguars 38% on offense. Johnson with a short throw. Minter, he needs the 36, and he's not going to get there. Taken down by a couple of Georgia Southern players, Raynard Ellis, along with Jay Bowdry to force a punt. Well, that's an excellent open field tackle by Bowdry, who against a guy that the caliber of Trey Mentor, who's Mentor, who is excellent in the open field. You've got to come up and make make plays. Ray, Renard Ellis, as you mentioned there as well, to, 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 uh, to get Mentor on the ground and, and force a punt here. This guy, I saw booming punts. Jack Brooks can hit him. 26-year-old Australian freshman with a high and deep one. Very good punt and a fair catch made after a kick of 51 by Jesse Liptrot. Saw him in pregame. He had a hang time of 5.1. He'll need him tonight. Three and outs for each team to start. Georgia Southern, South Alabama. The Eagles with that classic option attack. That is a staple of Georgia Southern football. Chad Lunsford in his second full year wanted to get back to those days. Taking over after the firing of Tyson Summers two Octobers ago. Did a great job last year. Took Georgia Southern from 10 losses to 10 wins. Steve Campbell hoping to do something similar in South Alabama. The second coach in his program, short history. A winner everywhere he's been. Shy words to throw it on first down. A rare sight and a completion right near the first down line to gain. Colby Ransom, the redshirt senior with a second catch of the year. Corners to cheat in, to cheat in and help out on the run when you start to execute out on the edges. Just keeps everybody on the defense honest. Running back is the Oklahoma State transfer J.D. King with a plunge into the pile for a short game. 
J.D. King, a junior from Fitzgerald, Georgia, which is about two hours away. He transferred in January, wanted to because of his ill father, who was being cared for by J.D.'s grandfather uh, until the grandfather passed away earlier this year. Oklahoma State, in an unusual move, actually wrote on his behalf, yeah. and his appeal was successfully heard, so he's able to play this year. And he had some success at Oklahoma State, set a, a record with 36 rushing attempts for 142 yards against West Virginia. Here's Logan Wright with a burst. And some space out to the 42, a gain of 13 for Georgia Southern's leading rusher. And Kevin, that's when it can be, it can be, it can become a tricky deal defensively for South Alabama. If they're, if Georgia Southern's able to get Logan Wright, the lead back going. You can call him fullback, you can call him lead back, whatever. He is the first option in the triple option attack, and if you can't get a handle on that, that makes it a long night. See the, the uh, per carry average at. Just under six yards per carry. Six feet, 225. This time, Wirtz will keep it on the option. Wirtz gets out of a tackle and is spun down just shy of midfield by D.J. Daniels, the second leading tackler in the Jaguar defense. And this is what this program has really kind of set its identity on. It's an option team. It's been that way. It's going to be that way. They don't want to move away from it. It allows you to compete. You know, so much so that earlier in the year, they almost took down Minnesota on the road. Late in that game, and Georgia Southern was right there. Ended up losing it 35-32. Almost had Minnesota beat. Yep. Gophers had a third and 29 inside their own 10. Somehow got out of it, came back for the win. First down run for Logan Wright, who is one of the high-impact players for Georgia Southern's offense tonight. Yeah, he's a guy that we're going to call his name a lot, Logan Wright. And Wesley Kennedy coming back. He's a big-time playmaker. On the other side, Nick Mobley leads this team in tackles, coming in with, with 41. And then Jeffrey Watley, who is just fantastic on the edges, had a nice visit with that young man uh, yesterday. Wright Kennedy, the backs here. It will be Logan Wright. He had a gain of four yards on first down. 33 yards on the last five plays. All runs for Georgia Southern. We ran an element of, uh, of option when I was in high school. And, and a, a bunch of wing T was, was the uh, official name of what we did. And I knew every Friday night, if we could get Kenny Franklin going, our fullback, that we were going to have a pretty good night. And so that's the same thing for Logan Wright. If he gets going... It's going to be a good night offensively for Georgia Southern. First time out taken by Steve Campbell. His defense in a short week trying to hang in early against this option. ESPN Thursday Night College Football. Brought to you by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. University of South Alabama Band, the USA Band. On a Thursday night from Lad Peebles. First game week six of the college football season. And a big Big Ten one to look forward to Saturday night. Presented by Wells Fargo, Michigan State, and Ohio State from the Chew in a top 25 game. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, ABC, and the ESPN app. We're five weeks in. Where's Ohio State for you? Uh, I got them at two. And they, they are playing some impressive football right now. And I think Justin Fields one of the better players in the country. Funny more on that. We look ahead to our unbeaten teams in tears. Later on in the broadcast, there's J.D. King. Jeremiah Little's on the hit. And King Jeremiah has it up for a first down. Stop. King's 5'11", 220 pounds, but... Well, he is certainly can run Alabama. between the tackles, comes in for the bigger line. Logan Wright, but yet can play lead back. It can get him out on the edges. This has been fun to watch so far. And a nice drive being put together here. Seven plays, six straight runs. That's their standard. Only the service academies, all option teams run it more. A seventh consecutive is to King. Running behind the center of his offensive line. A gain of five yards for J.D. King. They think he's...
going to break out one of these weeks. Eight Again, five, clear yard, late in three, August, and he's finally grasping line. the full playbook at this point. Yeah, still just kind of getting adjusted to, as he went from an offense with at Oklahoma State where it was more wide open and they toss it around to more of a predominantly run, 81% to be exact, as we talked about in the open, of running the football. So as a running back, hey, you welcome it because you're going to get your hands on the football. Four first downs on the drive. Here's Kennedy, a slippery runner, who is wrapped up. Nice Kennedy open Kennedy field tackle here. in the middle. That was Gus Nave down from the cornerback spot to set up a third down. Roy nice job defensively by Roy South Day. Alabama getting stingy no at the right time. This is where they wanted to live. You know, third down and five, so they've got a chance to get themselves off the field. Get to third and medium and then make a stop. But this may be, Kevin, four down territory here for uh, for Georgia Southern. We've got one of the better kickers in the in the country as well though. What a pre-snap movement here. Three receivers right. The lone back is Logan Wright. Wirtz will throw it for the second time. Now he has to run to a loop. Pressure he cannot. Wirtz taken down right near the line of scrimmage. Nick Mobley got him, the leading tackler for the Jaguars. Yeah, guy engineering major, leads the team, as you mentioned, coming in with 41 tackles. He's the bell cow. He's right in the center of the action, and his job is to spy on Shai Wirtz. He does a heck of a job there coming up, making a nice tackle and holding to a field goal attempt. But Tyler Bass is about as good as I've seen. They think he could be an NFL kicker. This one from 48, though, is blocked. DJ Daniels on top of the ball. He'll have no return. A 48-yard kick blocked off the right leg of Bass in South Alabama holds. A tremendous push. And an excellent block. And turning a Georgia Southern away for a second time. And I'll tell you what, we watched him. We watched Bass kick in pregame, and, I mean, he was nailing just about everything. Couldn't get a number. Like Sean Brown, maybe. They got a paw on that, baby. And the senior nose tackle right in the middle, playing in his 42nd straight game with a block. Now a quick hitter to Kawan Baker on first down. And Baker is planted. And he is their leading receiver in terms of yards. 227 yards coming in and two touchdown catches. Two-year starter. A big-time playmaker that they love to throw the football to. Actually want to get him more touches. Only 12 catches, 10 carries to start. Brown gets the belt after the block kick over on the South Alabama sideline. This is Minner. And Minner tries to break free of one tackle from Quavian Brinson. A couple of Eagles cover him up. Kendrick Duncan on the stop, and it's another third down upcoming. Yeah, this Georgia Southern defense, they are making it tough on Trey Minter to get going. Third down and He's got to keep him in check, not allowing much room or space. For him to really get his motor started. Big third down here for South Alabama, really needing to move the chains. Just a yard to get. Georgia Southern stacks the box. Minner is hit in the backfield, and down he goes with a loss. That was Renard Ellis who came up from his linebacker spot. Second on the team coming in and tackles, but that stymied the momentum of Mentor enough for the rest of the defense to rally up. 36 will come through. He comes through cleanly. And then everybody else, a bunch of white jerseys showing up at the party. Ellis known as slippery to his coaches for the way that he gets off blocks. He was a leading tackler two years ago at Furman as a true freshman. Made the move up to FBS. Sat out last year, having a major impact this season. Low snap fielded on a bounce by Brooks, who gets off the kick. Nicely done anyway. Oh, and it takes a great South Alabama bounce. Yeah, all the way down inside the, right about the 10-yard line. After a punt of 51 to start, this one goes for 64. 
Excellent job of fielding the punt and then finding a way to get it out at rugby style and all the way to the 10. That's the most impressive player in this game right now. He's a true freshman. He's 26 years old, Jack Brooks. And he's that old because he comes, as many punters do from Australia, particularly the city of Wagga Wagga in Australia. 30 punts, no touchbacks, and a kick of 64 there after a kick of 51 earlier. Amazing watching him check him up inside the five-yard line in pregame. And I'll tell you what. Does a heck of a job in terms of both styles. The rugby style that we saw on the last punt, and then as a conventional punter, he can boom him with, with hang time that we saw on the previous drive. Get a two there for Matt Rush. You ever been to Wagga Wagga, Australia? I have not. No? No directs from Houston to Wagga Wagga? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. It may be. But uh, I've not been to Wagga Wagga. Maybe a wheels up question. The, tonight's the first night, I've, uh, first time I've heard of Wagga Wagga. Second down, and Speedy LaRouche, as he's known, Matt LaRouche out of Venice, LaRouche, Florida, plows ahead of the 19, looks to be a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, they love getting him out on the edges of the defense and just maybe a setup for later in this drive because you know you run him between the tackles he's got great speed and playmaking ability but they love getting him getting the pitch in his hands on the edges fifteen plays fourteen runs so far for georgia southern expect more of the same thirty yard motion caleb put into the backfield and instead words will give it to Wright. And a break free run for Logan Wright. Dragged down from behind near the 30 after another Georgia Southern first down. Yeah, the big fella can rumble now. Big Logan Wright. He had a career-long 70-yard run against Maine earlier this year, but kind of picks his way through the offensive line. He'll do a nice job. Aaron Dowdle, the center, with a nice block, and that freed him up to, to, uh, to pick up the first down. Pretty good tackle by DJ Daniels right there. Talked to DJ yesterday, the second leading tackler on the South Alabama team. Wirtz will throw it, a quick connection, and a nice pickup on first down. And the ball came out late, out of the hands of Caleb Hood, and South Alabama will have it. One official along the sideline, the head linesman reached for his baggie, but he never, the uh, beanbag, but he never threw it. And they're still talking about whether or not the receiver was down. As it stands, it is rolling on the field as a ball. fumble recovered by the defense. First down. Now we uh, certainly every play is reviewed, so there's certainly going to be a review here. As we take a look at this one. Yeah, don't, don't put it. Don't put it down until we get confirmation. In South Alabama. You yeah. hear the officials telling. Uh, Talking to one another, don't put the football down because South Alabama wants to run a play quickly. Take a look, a nice throw from Wirtz. It's up to Caleb Hood. I think he's actually down and it's going to remain Georgia Southern's football. Previous play is under review. The knee is down. Yeah, knee and elbow are both down and he still has clean possession of the ball. It'll be Georgia Southern's ball. Yeah, it shouldn't take long for a replay official, Terry Walters. Sterling Fisher had the fumble recovery. That will be negated. Don't get the championship built just yet, Sterling. Yet. Still got work to do. Don't get too comfortable sitting over there on the bench on the sideline. Yeah, I think both knee and elbow are down, and then the ball comes out. This is but I do, I do like evidence. the officials allowing this to play out, knowing that replay would indeed take a look at it and then get it right. After further, the runner was down before the ball was fumbled. It'll be second down and a half yard at the 38 half yard line for Georgia South. That's exactly the absolute correct call. 
So it's a gain of nine and a half. If Wayne Winkler's specificity is to be, uh, be believed, Caleb Hood, the true freshman, Chad Lunsford singled him out to us for his improvement. And a gain of nine sets up second and short as we wind down in the first quarter. Here comes what they call the bobsled formation at Georgia Southern. That's four players in a row, three behind the quarterback Wirtz in the shotgun. I thought the pistol was weird. He fakes it to King. Wirtz will run it himself on the option and get upended, but he has enough for the first down. Riley Cole with a good lick. What's amazing is from that tight of a formation and stacked behind one another that they're still able to get the lead back a blocker and a pitch man. And right out of that formation, they've run it enough. Everybody knows Wright is the, the lead blocker. And then there with the, the end escaping outside, it allowed Works to turn the corner and pick up the first down. Georgia Southern had a 10 play drive last time, ended a blocked field goal. This will be the sixth play when we return to the second quarter from Mobile. Plenty of cool runnings on the ground for Georgia Southern in the first quarter, including this last play out of what we call the bobsled formation, <laughs> the four-way stack. And it led to a gain of five yards for Shy Words in a first down run. Kevin Brown, Andre Ware from Mobile, Alabama, as Words takes off and finds the first down marker into Jaguar territory to start the second quarter. You know, they ask Shy Words to do a lot, and he carries the ball. He's going to distribute it, but it's a short week, and he takes a pounding uh, throughout ball games. Sometimes it takes him to Thursday on a regular uh, week to get himself back and ready to go, and then playing on a Thursday night two nights earlier, I asked the coaching staff, hey, is he ready to go? And he's like, oh, yeah, when it's game time, that young man is ready to perform. All seven first downs for the Eagles. Looking for their first Sun Belt win after a loss to Louisiana last week as Wright is planted. Andre, right now it's 20 to six in terms of plays for Georgia Southern. You worry for South Alabama. How do you prepare for the option on a short week? And so far their defense has to be tired, though yeah, this is a nice play. You do it, though this is a, a, an excellent start to this series. But you worry defensively because the offense hadn't moved the football. All of a sudden, as you mentioned, the amount of plays starting to stack up where your defense is on the field. And that's the kind of offense this is. They pound away, they pound away, and then all of a sudden a big play will break because the defense has gotten itself tired. Once more without their best defensive player, lineman Tyree Turner. Here's the speedy Malik Murray who steps out of a tackle and has a first down near the 30-yard line. D.J. Daniels runs him out after 14 yards. And to our point where you think inside, inside, they show it, spin it outside to the speedster Murray, and all of a sudden he's off and running. Everybody's thinking down and inside. A very accurately thrown pass by Wirtz, and then now it's Murray on the edges. Wirtz three for three for 33. King and LaRoche, his backfield mates. On first and ten, they'll run triple. And Wirtz is taken down. Tackle from Kelvin Johnson, the JUCO transfer out of Independence Community College, making his first career start. Yeah, making, as you mentioned, his first career start, and it's because he can run. He can fill the alley from the from the uh, linebacker spot. They needed some speed, an element of speed, to, uh, to try to handle this Georgia Southern offense. The guys from Last Chance U. Mm -hmm. A lot of Last Chance U players on these teams. A lot of JUCO transfers for South Alabama, which really had to rebuild the roster. Steve Campbell in his second year. He's just added quite a bit of depth. He's up the academic responsibilities yeah. and work of the program, and now the next step, translate that into wins. And he told us there will always be a, a junior college an element to his program because that's where he's from you know he, he believes in the junior college system uh, there are plenty of them around and uh, uh, he has relationships with coaches on that level so 
You're always going to see that here at South Alabama. National champion 12 years ago in junior college at Mississippi Gulf Coast. So third and seven. It's an option team, not necessarily a pass. We got a shot up top with a big cushion. And instead he'll spin it to Logan Wright, who is undercut and taken down right near the line of scrimmage. Trey Young, the backup free safety with the play. And Georgia Southern will send out the field goal team again. I just thought Mark Mashad with the, the, the cushion that he was getting up top, a hitch route, and just anything after the catch, might have gotten Georgia Southern the first down. And so now they'll attempt another field goal here by Tyler Bass. First kick was blocked from 48. This one from 46. And... Time out. Oh, Georgia Southern, they're first. Hold the suspense. Chad Lunsford wants to get his ducks in a row before this kick. This will be a 30-second timeout. Right in the face of the left tackle, Jared Leeds. I just wonder if they would have picked up anything there. Would they have gone for it on fourth down? The world may never know. And I'm, I'm believing that he would have. You know, the you know, interesting... After a blocked field goal in the previous possession. The interesting thing, and, and I tend to agree with you, Georgia Southern has only gone for one fourth down attempt this year, yeah. which when you look at the option teams, the armies and navies of the world, they usually yeah. lead the nation in fourth down attempts. Georgia Southern has been more conservative in part because, because of, of the Bass. Of Bass. <laughs> because of Tyler Bass. Set the Georgia Southern record for career 40 yarders last game. This one from 46. It is not blocked. It is on the way. And it is 3 nothing Georgia Southern. And with plenty. And I mean, plenty of play. Bass gets a chance to show off the power in his right leg. And the Eagles strike first. Forty-six yard kick for Tyler Bass. Georgia Southern first to strike in the opening game of week one uh, of week six, beg your pardon, game one of week six of college football. That is uh, Miss Paula, by the way, the Jaguars mascot with the boogie down. You ever try to dance in a mascot costume? Uh, no, I'm not sure I've ever been in a I know I haven't been in a mascot. Yeah, you need a little fan in there. I would definitely it's a sticky need a night fan. to be in the fur. There's no doubt. Need some ice packs, too. I sweat thinking about sweat. Kick off your Week 5 NFL Sunday this weekend with ESPN 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central with our countdown crew. All the early breaking stories, injury updates, and game previews right up to kickoff. Streaming live on the ESPN app. Whole lot going on in the league off the field this week. Will Stefan Diggs be traded? Jalen Ramsey be traded? Ram Seahawks tonight as well to kick off week five in the league. Well, not much going on with South Alabama's offense. Six plays, 16 yards, and yet to pick up a first down. See if his Johnson with a deep ball has a receiver reeled in nice. by Baker. All the way home, Kawan Baker with a one-play strike of 75 yards. Take that. It's been quiet all night. And then all of a sudden, Cephas Johnson goes over the top for six. Excellent play fake to hold the, the secondary. And he gets his man, Baker, right in stride. 75 yards for Baker, whose previous season long was 74. And Johnson, after six plays and two three and outs, delivers a beautiful ball over the top. That was pretty. A South Alabama lead without a first down at 7-3 Jags. Just straight up beautiful. A play action pass, and he runs the post. Right to the middle of the field. Everybody's thinking Trey Mentor. And it's Baker that comes wide open. You lead him to the far goal post. Right in stride for six.
75 yard touchdown pass Cephas Johnson to Kawan Baker after back to back three and out. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it's just miscommunication in the secondary. Kendrick Duncan, the safety on the far side, he's going to come up. Well, they're waiting on Donald Rutledge to rotate back. By the time he identifies things, it's way too late. Meanwhile, the kick from Guajardo just bounced out of bounds. And I tell you what, Kawan Baker made us look good in Free terms of impact, of bounds, impact players. Team. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. He is one that we, we chose tonight because of that, for that reason. His ability to make plays down the field. They love moving him around a lot. Just want to get him, give him a chance to shake free. I tell you what, that last play for South Alabama, he did just that. And uh, I know it was open, but Johnson. Pretty much hit him in stride. That was a strong throw, thrown ball. for a young man who's in his first year as a starting quarterback. So first down, bobsled for Georgia Southern from the 35, four in the backfield, and Wirtz will throw it. He's looking long, and he did not have a receiver there. Now Wirtz on the run will just tuck it and go. He was looking for Colby Ransom deep, and he never had a shot. Yeah, well, I think. Most of the route combination was to his left. And when he got flushed out of the pocket, there was nobody coming across that he could throw the ball to. He did the smart thing with, with experience, was to tuck it, pull it down, get what you can get, and come back on second down. But you got to give this South Alabama defense credit for coverage on the back end. J.D. King, the lone back along with Wirtz. Wirtz with a late give, and King picks up just a couple. Looked like he stumbled, or maybe tripped over the, the foot of Sean Brown, the nose tackle, and here we go again, just where George Stewart, the defensive coordinator for South Alabama, wants to be, third down and, and long. Only Northern Illinois and Miami, Florida, have been worse on third down this year than Georgia Southern. One for four in this game. That actually betters the season mark of 24% coming in. That surprises me with Miami with Manny Diaz as the head coach. There's J.D. King, and King is taken down off the right side. I guess when you score 17 at home against Central Michigan, you probably don't hit a lot of third downs in fairness. Nick Mobley in on the stop, and it'll be a punt. I'm not sure. I think Coach Lumford's going to go for it here, right? Just beyond midfield, about the right, you are. 44 yard line. This is, you can't pick up a yard in this offense. You're, you're doing something wrong. Just their second fourth down attempt of the season. They're 0 for 1. Running back is King with two tight ends to the left. Pressure shown off the edge. It's a give to J.D. King. Tough running. Ah. It looks like he's got it, depending on the spot. And it is an up for a first down. Needed one, got about a yard and a quarter. Well, it was a second effort by King that picked up the first down. It looked like he was going to be short initially. Williams comes up and makes a nice, McWilliams comes up and makes a nice stop. But it looked like penetration. He was going to be short of it. And that second effort, just, just enough to pick up the first. Right through the tackle of Roxell McWilliams. Georgia Southern at its own 45, and Wirtz will pitch it on the option. Head of steam for Wright, lowering his shoulder into South Alabama territory. Roy Yancey on the hit after 12 yards. Wright has to shake his head. There was a hard collision at the end of that play, and Logan Wright will head to the sideline. You're going to have and depend on a lot of edge blocking, but they get one from one of the receivers out on the edge that allowed... The pitch and the turning of the corner by Logan Wright. It's just excellent work out on the, out on the edges. It was Najee Thompson. Wesley Kennedy, the third. Plows ahead for a gain of three yards or so. The receivers in this offense, they're asked to block a lot more than they are to, to catch passes just because of the nature of the offense. And then all of a sudden, you know, your number's called. But you've got to be an unselfish player, like that previous play by Thompson, to just block. And you don't have to, you know, throw any haymakers to get guys on the ground. Just enough. 
where, where a ball carrier can get by you. High snap. Words will fake it to Thompson. Edwards has nowhere to go. He's planted for a loss. Janarius Johnson, the sophomore nose tackle, first one to the quarterback. And credit, he needs to give credit to Devin Rocket, who was in the way of that quick. They wanted to run a, just a quick flare pass outright, and Rocket comes right in the vision of Wirtz, where he forced him to pull it back down, and all of a sudden the rest of the troops were there to help out. Now, if you're South Alabama, a golden opportunity to get yourself off the field. First career full sack for the junior college transfer, Johnson. He the 33 for a first down. Wirtz steps away from pressure and air mails it to the sideline. And good pressure, as you mentioned. It's like Littles, Jeremiah Littles, with the pressure there to force the throw out of bounds, and we'll see what, uh, what Coach Lunsford wants to do here. The smart thing to do would be to punt the football, but nowhere, and again, give credit to the back end with coverage. It's a coverage sack that allowed the D-line to get home. If you had 634 second quarter on your bingo card for first incompletion of the game, <laughs> well, you get to put at least one bingo chip down. Teams were a combined seven for seven as Beck's punt. It will bounce inside the five and into the end zone. That's where South Alabama will start at the 20 with a seven to three lead. ESPN Plus, your home for Sunbelt football all season long. Saturday at 3.30, Arkansas State, one of the great group of five programs against Georgia State. Just one of the hundreds of Sunbelt football, basketball, and Olympic sport events available on ESPN+. Plus. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. Option play goes nowhere on first down. Kendall Vildor off the edge with a stop on Trey Minner. This is a potential Sunday player. The senior corner Vildor, the preseason Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, he's very consistent as a defensive back. He's the team's best cover man, and it's kind of shocked that, that Baker got behind him that much on that touchdown pass. But they're showing you his ability to tackle in the open field and the willingness to do so. One of the great cornerback duos in the group of five, Vildor and Brinson, combined 13 interceptions. On a swing out here, Minter is planted. Big hit for Reynard Ellis, the 230-pound sophomore. It is apparent that the game plan or the defensive scheme of Scott Sloan was to focus on Trey Minner. And they don't want to let him get going, which is why I think Baker got himself so wide open on the touchdown catch. Everybody's focused in on number five. Nine plays offensively, seven touches for Minter. Third and long, Johnson pressured, and he just has to throw it away. Yeah, smart play. No one's open. He gets tremendous complete. pressure, a quick pressure from Raymond Johnson. And now what do you do? In the drive with a kick of some sort. And here, in this case, it's going to be a punt. A, smooth, a swim move off the edge. Is going to get him home by Jacob Shoemaker. Nice inside move and right to the quarterback. Junior, who they think has an NFL look. 6'3", 260. Two-time all-conference player Johnson. Here's Brooks with another low punt. That one barely got through. Yeah, that was quick pressure and almost got it blocked. And the result is almost equally as good as a block. And Georgia Southern will start at the South Alabama 42. It's only a 25-yard kick. Would you rescue me? Would you get my back? Would you take my car when I stop to crack? Would you rescue me? Uh, you... The last punt, it was another low snap. Andrew Zink with a snap here, and Brooks' punt was very nearly blocked. And he's lucky that Najee Thompson didn't get a hand on this one goes up and it just goes right on the outside hand of, of Thompson. And I'm Georgia Southern with this field position. Let's show it and, and maybe spin one over the top here. 
They've run 32 plays to South Alabama's 10. Out of the flats, Murray steps his way out of bounds. Malik Murray for a modest first down pickup. Yeah, they hit Murray on the same play for 14 yards a little earlier in this quarter. So trying to go back to the well a little bit. We get Wirtz settled in again in the passing game. Second catch for the former walk-on. A big smile in the huddle. Listen, you're a wide receiver at Georgia Southern. You catch a pass for any yard, you better smile. You are allowed to smile. Mm -hmm. Wirtz has put it up six times, completed five, and he'll run it here. Well, they are doing a nice job of playing this option, especially with forcing Wirtz to keep the football, not allowing uh, Georgia Southern to out-leverage them to get outside and make plays with a pitch man. Forcing the ball to the quarterback and then getting hits on the quarterback, hoping that they pay off later, Kevin, in this ball game. Wirtz is only playing his second game back. He hurt his shoulder in the first game against LSU. Missed the next three, and here he is on a short week. Georgia Southern one for six on third downs, and King fights hard on the inside nice run, run, and he's got it. First down, Eagles. Well, that's an excellent run by J.D. King. The guy's just grabbing his legs, hanging on to his jersey, and... Ultimately, it's Nick Mobley that brings him down. Oklahoma State transfer two years ago, their second leading rusher in the Big 12. Just right up the middle of the formation, and he gets contacted right at the line of scrimmage and just drags guys past the first down marker. It's a good drive here for Georgia Southern. Option left for Words with all kinds of room in the center. And word staggers to the 19, 12 more yards as the Eagles are finally in the red zone. And that's, you don't want to allow Wirtz or any of these other backs to get a full head of steam. The offensive line there did a nice job of getting push. I mean, there's tremendous push, and it allowed Wirtz to get himself going. They reestablished the line of scrimmage, and he was at full speed by the time he hit the line of scrimmage. Just an excellent job by the big guys up front. Not touched for about 10 of those yards. Inside, it's right with a flag thrown from behind the pile. Hold right on the carry. And it's going to be a hold the play. to make it difficult. Holding offense, number 61. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Not, a, not something that you want to have happen. Drew Wilson, not a right tackle. You're running the running the uh, the option, the triple option. You can, can't afford to have penalties like that. It's their first of the game, but now you're first and 20 with a team that doesn't pass much. Any penalty for an option team, and this is why Navy and Army are often among the nation's best, is really a crusher. And it's why coaches that run the option really, really stress discipline and how to play the game to avoid penalties where it really hurts you offensively like this one. Words on first down again untouched for a long time. Spun down across the 25 by Riley Cole. It's a gain of six yards. Well, you get all kinds. You get, you know, the bobsled uh, formation. You get the regular lead option. That one was counter option where you give the look where you're going right and it works spins around and all of a sudden they're coming back the other direction once they've got you to false step one false step out of position and then it could be off to the races just can't get a bead on what they're doing third year running this team third year starter for words well versed in this option and he gets rid of it just in time to Kennedy here. Around the edge, inside the 10, and bulldozing his way across the five-yard line. Well, what a block by Matt LaRoche out on the edges to allow Wesley Kennedy to turn the corner. I mean, it was just an absolute cut-down block that opened up an alley for Wesley. Number five, a nice block there, and then it allowed the speedy Wesley up the field, and they overcome a holding penalty, and now knocking on the door of South Alabama's end zone. Their longest play of the night for 19, Kennedy and King the backs. 
on first and goal, J.D. King to the end zone and across it for a Georgia Southern touchdown. His second touchdown in as many weeks. And the junior, J.D. King, puts the Eagles back in front. Yeah, I give all the credit in that drive to Matt LaRoche for the block to allow Wesley Kennedy to get up the field. And then it's the tough, hard inside running of J.D. King to get himself into the end zone to put Georgia Southern back on top. And the Eagles shift everyone back in the middle for the extra point try from Bass. Boy, does he kick it high. It gets up in a hurry. 10-7 Georgia Southern. 39-10 in terms of total plays. 10-7 on the scoreboard. Touchdown run for J.D. King after a big run from Wesley Kennedy, sprung by a great block from Matt LaRoche. Georgia Southern stable of running backs coming in handy on another long touchdown drive. Actually, this one not so long, 42 yards, but a whole lot of plays as per usual. You've got to be unselfish. If you're not the ball carrier and you're asked to do a job but for, it to, for this offense to function as it should, you've got to do your job when you don't have the football equally as much as when you're, when you're carrying it. Tyler Bass's kick to the back of the end zone, and oh, wow. Mitter's going to run it out. Trey Mitter, he's their most explosive player, takes a shot and gets upended at the 20. Let's go back to the play before the touchdown, the 19-yard run from Kennedy. Yeah, it's it's the block of LaRoche on DJ Daniels, the sa safety coming up. Then he gets a piece of the linebacker, Kelvin Johnson. That really frees up the ball carrier, Wesley Kennedy. And that led to the touchdown run by J.D. King. Well, here's a new quarterback into the game for South Alabama for this first down play. Desmond Trotter is in. And the redshirt freshman will take this shotgun snap. And Trotter will hand it off to Minner, his eighth touch of the first half. So Cephas Johnson, four for five, threw the touchdown earlier. And it looks like his ankle is a little bit beaten up right now. It looks like he got rolled up on. That previous series when he got pressure from Raymond Johnson. So he kind of limps off the field and on comes Desmond Trotter, the redshirt freshman as you described. Coaches feel that he can really be a good player, not afraid to play him, and they don't hold the playbook back when he's in. They won't hear. They'll run it with Trotter, who gets stuck in the middle of the Georgia Trotter, Southern defense. Take a timeout. Now the Eagles will not. And I think both teams are content to let this half run out. Well, you know my feeling about first halves. Never enough points scored in the first half. And when there's point, when there's time on the clock, let's go down and try to get a cheap field goal. I wonder with a redshirt freshman, though, does that change? One who's only thrown one yeah, pass maybe, in his career? If, if you have the confidence in him that you say, uh, and you, you let him this win the end of the second time of possession being dominated by Georgia Southern. 23 minutes to just seven for South Alabama. South Alabama had one first down. It came on a 75-yard touchdown. They're hanging in despite the dominant effort by Georgia Southern in terms of holding the ball. Dance party in Mobile on a Thursday night. 10-7 Eagles. A little fun belt to kick off your week six. Just outside of downtown Mobile, Alabama. It is the second Sun Belt game of the year for Georgia Southern and South Alabama. The Eagles lead it 10 to 7 at the half. Once again, Kevin Brown, Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Um, an unusual first half. I think that's fair to say. South Alabama ran 12 plays and they're only down three. Yeah, when you look at it, 23 in time, time of possession, 
23 minutes for Georgia Southern, only seven for South Alabama. You're not giving yourself enough opportunities to put some points on the board. And as we mentioned during the, the first half, your defense is starting to wear itself down a little bit. Georgia Southern, again, with those 23 minutes, has run the ball pretty effectively. But Tyler Bass, after a 10-play drive, had his kick blocked. Sean Brown got a hand on it. And then South Alabama would strike its only first down of the game was a 75-yard touchdown. Cephas Johnson to Kawan Baker. Yeah, it was just defensive backs on their on their heels a little bit. A nice throw over the top. And then all of a sudden, Georgia Southern got itself going. An excellent block. Set up J.D. King here to put himself into the end zone and gave Georgia Southern the lead. Wesley Kennedy, the run of 19 before the touchdown for King, his second in a row. 23-7, the time of possession. The only first down for South Alabama was the touchdown. Most of their total yards, 75 of their 92 on that one play. For Georgia Southern, the good news for them the last couple of weeks, they have Shy Wirtz back. Uh, he was hurt in the LSU game to open the season, a shoulder injury. Sometimes through the year, but often on the ground, he has controlled this team. Yeah, he really has. I mean, the offense kind of goes through him, leads the team the first half, 10 carries, 48 yards, just under five yards a carry. And then he's been uh, pretty good through the air as well, five of six, 35 yards. But uh, he, he's got to get himself going. If, if they're going to give themselves any room here in which to relax in the second half, Shai Wirtz going to have to, uh, he's going to be a big, big part of that. Accurate first half for Words. Five of six after going just seven of 15 in his first two games on the year. Well, one week ago, or not even a full week, South Alabama ran 78 plays in what was a loss to Louisiana Monroe. They controlled the ball. Tonight, they are on pace to run 24 total plays through 30 minutes of football. Yeah, it just kind of gives you a chance. You know, something happens in that 78 plays that may 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 pop. Just like the, the pass over the over the top to Kawan Baker. But they've got to give themselves an opportunity. You go back to what, I, what we just mentioned, time of possession. Only seven minutes in the first half of this ball game. That has to change for South Alabama. Tyler Bass will kick it away. Trey Minner took it out of the end zone earlier. He will not do so here. So who's going to be the quarterback for South Alabama? It will be Cephas Johnson once again. Limped into the locker room a little bit early after taking a hit to the ankle. He is good to go to start the half. Yeah, his left ankle is just, I mean, heavily wrapped. It's where big Raymond Johnson came down on him and you see the drive chart there, punt, punt, and then the big touchdown, and another punt, and then the end of uh, end of the first half. But there's the, the heavily wrapped left ankle. And Johnson will roll on that ankle, air it out deep again. Single coverage, and Kendall Vildor jumps over the top of Jalen Tolbert to smack it away with a right hand. Yeah, Vildor wasn't going to let it happen again. He was... The player that uh, Baker got behind for the touchdown pass, and he was right in stride on that play. Looked like he was going up for an opening tip in a basketball game. Yeah, Tobert, the coaching staff says he is on the brink of becoming a, a solid, solid player. And trying to fake it to Minner, Minner again. They so go right back to him here. Try, second down, Minner yeah, with a run. Just trying to get him going. Uh, it's been tough. Tough sledding for uh, for Trey in this in the game so far. We had a chance to visit with him a little bit, and nine script nine touches from scrimmage, and none longer than five yards. But he was excited about this game yesterday, ready to play. But uh, this Georgia Southern defense just not allowing him to get started. Told us he didn't mind the workload even at 5'9", 205 on a short week. He's used to that dating back to high school in JUCO but not even two yards of carry here. Yeah, a little false start on the offensive line. One of the one of those big fellas leaned back. Illegal snap, offense number 66. Five yard penalty, so second down. Correction, third down. It's Brian Ankerson, the former walk-on, who 
The coaches just really rave about him. They called him as the team's best offensive lineman. Third down and 13. Steve Campbell needed any offensive lineman when he got here last year. Said they had about seven. Just needed some guys that could suit up. Ankerson was one. He's become a two-year starter. Third down, and it's Baker with a 75-yard touchdown earlier. This will not be a 75-yard touchdown. South Alabama's sideline thought there might have been a high hit there. Well, there was definitely head-to-helmet-to-helmet -to -helmet -to -helmet contact. Nothing called. The replay booth can look at a play and check it for targeting if it so deems, and so far no signal on that. Baker fighting to get outside. Not sure who comes in with a helmet late. It's it's Rutledge, the safety. Another low snap, and Brooks does a nice job to get off a high punt, and a fair catch is made at the 29 by Kennedy. Well, I tell you, for having to scoop everything up and get it off in a hurry, he's doing, I mean, one heck of a job in terms of basically flipping the field for for, for this uh, South Alabama football team. That's another 50-yard punt. His third at 50-plus in a game. And it hangs so high, Kevin, that you you rarely get an opportunity to run him back. Like I said earlier, we I was kind of clocking him with my my stopwatch on the phone and it one hung in the air for just under 5.2 seconds. So Georgia Southern after nearly 40 first half plays starts with another run. J.D. King inches ahead for four and a touchdown for Georgia Southern in the first half. Three yards on the play. Second down and seven. And they're going to need a little bit more. This South Alabama team from uh, their quarterback, Cephas Johnson, and was rearing back throwing deep balls. He's going to have to kind of methodically work his way down the field in the passing game to open up some things where they get mentor. Matt LaRoche with an inside run. Meanwhile, LaRoche is out near the 40-yard line. He had the big block to spring Kennedy for 19 earlier, and this time LaRoche picks up 12. And I say that, Kevin, because, you know, these the snaps for this defense is starting to starting to add up, and, and all of a sudden guys are two and three yards off the ball as opposed to fighting to avoid the reestablishing of the line of scrimmage. And when that starts to happen, it's easy offensively for Georgia Southern. J.D. King. Yeah. Is it about this point where you realize, oh, this is a Thursday and we just played on Saturday? Is it this point where the early week fatigue might start to set in? Well, it might, but uh, when you look at both teams, you know, having this kind of the same situation. So it's a short week for everybody. Here we go with the bobsled formation. Wirtz, King, LaRoche, and Kennedy. On the option, Wirtz, the pitch to Kennedy gets away from a defender in the backfield, and he just picked up an extra 15 yards at least. Well, and I tell you what, they had it well played. Jalen Thompson just gave up leverage on the outside, and that allowed Wesley Kennedy to turn the corner. They had a guy for the quarterback, a guy for the pitch man, and you got to make that play. It's actually uh, De Devin Rocket who should have made that tackle. If he, if he does his job there, it's held to basically no gain. Instead, it's a first down. Kennedy has the two longest plays of the night for Georgia Southern, both 19-yard runs. And this time it's a gain of two. Oh, we talk so much about, well, you got to stop the lead back. you got to stop the fullback in the, in the triple option. Well, equally as important is when the ball gets to the outside edges, you've got to make those tackles. you got to be a willing tackler and a guy that's going to stick his nose in there and tackle in the open field. And when you don't, it could turn in to, uh, to some huge plays. Five plays, all runs on the drive. Second down and nine, and Wirtz will throw. Short and high. 
sailing through the midst of Mark Michon. Nice job of making him somewhat double clutch that throw. And when he brought it down to throw it the second time, there was a defender in his face. Big Maurice Strong plowed his way through, causing an errant throw by Shai Works. Once again, this has been the problem area for Georgia Southern. Two for seven in the game, 13 for 53 in the season on third downs. What do you like here on a third and nine? Well, I think the big receiver at the top, Mashad. Words into coverage. That should have been picked off. Oh boy. Gus Nave dropped it. it would have ended a big time streak for Wirtz without an interception and it was right and I mean right into the hands but one of the defenders name on the back end I mean he loaded that one up it went it sailed high but you've got to come up with that one that's field position that's momentum everything's kind of riding on, on one on a play like that 141 passes in a row without an interception, and that streak should have stopped at 140. Beck to punt for midfield in the face of pressure, and this is not a good punt. A low one marked out of bounds at the 15. Punt of just 23 yards, and South Alabama is still down just three. Week 5 Monday Night Football, the NFC's last unbeaten team, the San Francisco 49ers, as you all guessed, against Baker Mayfield of the Browns at Levi Stadium, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Monday Night Countdown kicks it off two hours prior. A couple of former Georgia Southern Eagles, Jarrett McKinnon's on IR, and Matt Breed is part of the backfield for the unbeaten Niners. First play of the drive, it is... A handoff Jared going Wilson, backwards for Jared Wilson. Now, his first touch is a loss of one for South Alabama. And, and I don't care who you put in at running back, it's it's going to be much of the same until you start to throw the ball with a little bit of consistency to back this Georgia Southern defense off. It's going to be just that, where they can pin their ears back, play the run, and then on their way to the quarterback. 75 yards on the touchdown pass, 23 yards on the other 15 plays. Rushing yards right now, Georgia Southern leads 197 to 11. On an inside give, there are three Georgia yeah. Southern players all over Wilson, led by the nose tackle, C.J. Wright. You're going to have to throw the football. I mean, it's just a must, and you can't put a young quarterback like Cephas Johnson in a position where you get in a rhythm or, or, or a habit of running on first, running on second. Now it's third and long, and everybody in the building knows that you need to throw the ball. That's that's tough for anybody. You can put Brett Favre under center in his heyday, and that that's tough. No Trey Minner for this third down and 11. Johnson will give it to the motion man, Baker. The touchdown scorer from earlier. He is taken down by Donald Rutledge, the graduate transfer from Savannah State. It's more of a, a spread option team in terms of what South Alabama wants to do. So they're heavy run as well, but... When you have a team that, that sees that basically on a daily basis from their own offense. They are daring you to throw the football in, in terms of uh, short to mid, the medium range areas. It's tough to run it. 5-3 and outs out of seven possessions. One touchdown, one ended on downs. Angled kick to the sideline by Brooks and Georgia Southern will have superb field position from the South Alabama 47 when we return. What a non-conference season it was for the Sun Belt Conference. This is conference game number two for Georgia Southern, which almost had a power five win in South Alabama. 25-point underdog, Georgia State. Opening week went into Knoxville, started the nightmare season for Tennessee. Road wins for Coastal Carolina at Kansas and App State, which won a road game at a Power 5 team on a blocked field goal. Does that sound familiar? 24-21 over 
North Carolina. You may recall the next week, North Carolina then almost beat Clemson. App State certainly the class of this Sun Belt right now. Chad Lunsford, Steve Campbell trying to get their teams there. From the 47 of the Jaguars, Wirtz will look to throw. He's looking long in the single coverage. A lot of contact, and there is no flag as he searched for Mark Mashad. The coverage came from Travis Reed. Well, they try to run Mashad by him after Travis Reed had continuously been off in coverage. That one maybe just a tad bit underthrown by Wirtz. The weight on it. Big receiver at 6'4", trying to climb the ladder and go get it. Wirtz has missed his last three since a five for six start. And a handoff here. Right. They set up third and long, J.D. King. Yeah, Kevin, you gotta you gotta give credit where credit's due, and and uh, this defense as much and as long as they've been on the field tonight to hold it just ten points is just unbelievable. The first half out there for 23 minutes, uh, the majority of this half they've been on the field, but yet still fighting to get to a third down and long situation that really favors you uh, against a, a, a team with an offense like this 30 more plays for Georgia Southern's offense South Alabama has held on third down time and again Wirtz on the keeper he is blasted shy Wirtz knocked wow. to the ground by Travis Reed well, we saw Travis Reed in coverage working against the, the larger Mashad and then coming up and excellent run support this is what you're asked to do when you play an option team, that's getting the job done right there. Nice job, young man. Senior who felt like he had something to prove this year. Injuries really marred his season last year at a Jones County Junior College. What a series for Reed. And Georgia Southern punts again as this sails into the end zone on the fly. Not a great kick again for Beck. Still a three-point game, still in Mobile. Hot day, beautiful night here in Mobile, though it's cooled off considerably. South Alabama, with 6.23 to go in the third, has 99 total yards. 75 of them on one play and one first down for Cephas Johnson's crew in seven drives and yet it is a three-point game and the Jaguars are one strike away from maybe taking the lead back. Johnson will look for it here with a deep shot and he's in between a couple of receivers. He was short for Baker and long for Tolbert. Yeah, and it's been flare passes or either deep shots and there's no medium range passing game. Some curls, some slants some quick outs, things of that sort to, to keep a defense off balance. Uh, it's when you drop back that deep, they know to get deep. But when you run some intermediate routes, it's a nice mixture. Minner try to break free. He finally will. He gets a block from his quarterback. And Trey Minner has the second first down of the game. And the first one that doesn't end in the end zone for South Alabama, a run of 20. My excellent run by Minner to get himself started. He has been stymied for the better part of this game. Starts one way, it's designed to go left. He comes all the way out the back door with it. And then a nice block as well by the quarterback, Cephas Johnson, to uh, to free him up. Got a piece of Kendall Vilder in the conference preseason defensive player of the year. And Johnson will look long again. Off his back foot for Tolbert. He's got it in stride. Are you kidding? <laughs> Three first downs in the game. Two of them on 75 and 60 yard touchdowns. South Alabama's had the ball for about 10 seconds and leads it 13 to 10. Well, you get a couple of these during a game. And I think out of three of them, Zephus Johnson's been good on two. Who needs a medium range, pa range passing game when you're that accurate with a deep ball? I mean, it hits the receiver, Tolbert, right in stride. Again, Vildor's waiting on safety help. Rutledge and Duncan nowhere in the neighborhood. 
It has been an all or nothing at all kind of night. It's an Old Town Thursday in Mobile. What is going on in this game? Three first downs, two touchdowns. South Alabama has the lead. We don't know how, but they do. Sixty-yard touchdown toss to Jalen Tolbert, who thought he was going to go to Michigan State, decided the night before signing day to head to South Alabama, and he's the recipient of another Cephas Johnson deep ball. Three first downs, two 60-plus yard touchdowns in the game, and Georgia Southern will start to 25 after another Jaguars deep strike, and a beautiful throw by Johnson. Well, and I mean, an excellent throw. He's going to get... Tobert on a deep post route, the safety, thinking run again. They get flat-footed. He takes a step up, and Cephas Johnson lays one right out in front of Jalen Tolbert. And there's nothing you can do about that. When you get flat-footed as a safety and you can't turn your hips and run and the receiver's coming at you full speed, forget about it. That is just a well-thrown football. And Hey, we're going to keep connecting on them, keep dialing them up. Erosion King in the backfield for Wirtz on this first down. The high pitch to LaRoche. Good the open option. field tackle. That is Trey Young all over him, Andre. That is exactly how you play it. You have someone account for the dive back. The quarterback forced him to pull it. He pulls it out. You got a, a, a defender for the quarterback and then one for the pitch man. Excellent job out in the open field. And fighting off a nice block, making a heck of a play is Trey Young. He was listed as a free safety, but he need guys that can tackle in the open field. And what he certainly did on that last play. Second down and 10 words with a quick hitter. Murray dodges a tackler. And Malik Murray will set up a third down and four. Yeah, it's not the type of game where you need knockout shots and, and, and big hard hits. you got to make sure because you're leveraged on the outside. You have to make sure you make that tackle. You're in position. you got to break down, make the tackle, and keep this team out of third and short. Call it third and three officially for Chad Lunsford's group. Two for nine on third downs in the game. J.D. King, oh, and that'll be two for ten. He gets only a yard. That's well played. And again, for as many snaps as this defense has been on the field, well, you got to take your hat off. And I'm not sure you don't punt the football here, because if you don't pick it up, and you're Georgia Southern, you are giving a short field to South Alabama, and they finally elected to do so. Go ahead and punt it away and play defense. Surprised it took that long, honestly, but punt team is in there. Beck will kick it to Minter. High kick from Beck, not a particularly deep one. Into a crowd, Man. and fair caught by Minter just shy of the 30. I did a lot of things on the field, never wanted that job in terms of being a field and punch. I can't imagine why. Hey, Boomer and TJ are back every week with NFL Primetime on Sunday night, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. All the long-form highlights and analysis and nicknames you've come to know from those days' games. Scott Van Pelt, Joe Tess, part of the fun updated after Sunday and Monday. Download the app or go to ESPNPlus.com. South Alabama with the ball and again goes nowhere on first down. You know, our Bill Connolly of ESPN.com has his metric success rate, which measures the uh, percentage of yards you need on first or second down to be successful. It, it's three for 22 right now is the success rate for South Alabama. 19 plays have gone nowhere. And they have two touchdowns and a 20-yard run. You take the touchdowns, forget about all the other garbage, and you take the lead, and, uh, and you're happy with it. On the rollout, Johnson. And that's incomplete, looking for the touchdown man from earlier, Tolbert. And that's one that, uh, that Tolbert needs to, eight, to reel in. Tolbert that's the incomplete. intermediate passing game that I talked about. That, that backs a defense off. That keeps them on their heels a little bit. 
you have opportunities and see if Johnson throws an accurate football receiver Tolbert's got to come up with that one. Only a one year starter in high school was an all state player at Davidson High School here in Mobile. First year starter will check at the sideline before third and nine. A lot of motion in the secondary there for Georgia Southern, which was getting the pieces into place late. Time out. Georgia Southern, they're first. It'll be 30 seconds. Yeah, Darrell Baker, the strong safety, was sprinting up from the safety spot to cover a receiver in the slot. So Chad Lunsford wants to get his defense aligned before a pivotal third and nine. Exactly where you want a team playing a young quarterback and third down and long trying to force him into a mistake I'm, I'm the offensive coordinator here. I, I'm gonna work the edges a little bit nothing late over the middle Nothing good happens over the middle late Kevin keep that one in mind tuck that one Thank in your you. back pocket Look. Gonna put it in the front pocket. No. Too? Yeah, it's well, it's it's easier to get to it <laughs> in your front pocket so but you never want to throw the ball late over the middle. I probably never will, to be honest. Third and nine. Johnson will dump it to Minter. Can he run after the catch? He's still on his feet. And about half the Georgia Southern team got a piece of him as Minter has dropped well shy of the first down line to gain. Well, I tell you what, they play, they're playing That'll zone, and down. as soon as he touched the football, we talk about guys rallying up. Raymond Johnson and his crew got there in a hurry. That's been a big night for Jack Brooks. It has. He's, he's had to field a few around his shoelaces. He's had three 50-yard punts despite continuous low snaps. This is a clean one, and he just gets it away. A high and short kick that takes a beautiful oh, yeah. Jaguar bounce. Look at this baby roll. Down to the 11. It's a punt of 60. That is a golden boot for the 26-year-old at a Wagga Wagga, Australia. And Georgia Southern basically forced him to get it out early. He didn't hit it the way he wanted to, but the roll after it because they committed so many to coming after him. You know, it was, it's a fair catch situation, and you don't get over there. It rolls all the way down, and they're actually going to mark this right at about the 10-yard line. Officially 56 on the punt, 46.2 on the average tonight. And this is where, if you're Georgia Southern, you have to stay away from the, from the mistake. Led the nation in turnover margin last year. Wirtz, who still hasn't thrown a pick in two years, completes nice. a deep ball. Wonderfully dropped in to Wesley Kennedy out of the backfield. And tremendous co uh, concentration by Kennedy to reel that one in because there was a player coming off the hash mark, barreling down on him. One of the safeties, Kennedy just on a wheel route up the sideline, just kind of sneaking out as though he was going to block, and hey, what it was perfectly timed. Trey Young was charging hard. A gain of 24, Georgia Southern's longest play tonight. Option words. Oh, nice oh he jukes out a South Alabama defender, and that same defender finally chases him down from behind Sterling Fisher. A gain of 23 yards, and a very late flag is thrown. Well, he gave it and took it away in a, a one fell swoop. Full speed, give it and take it. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 23. Oh, boy. Ten-yard penalty. We play first down. Mark Mashad with a block in the back after a run of 23, and that will be negated. Yeah, he's trying to help out at the very tail end of this Shy Wirtz run. 23 will certainly come into the screen, and it's late. Well, well down the field. Penalty moves the ball back really, no need to do it. He's already out of bounds. First down and ten. Might have been Colby Ransom, number yeah. six. I didn't think it was Mashad. Still a positive gain. And King on first down will get two. And he lost.
lost the ball. J.D. King came out late. And Georgia Southern, which led the nation in turnover margin last year, sees Gus Nave run with the football, but we don't have an official signal yet. The ruling on the field was the runner was down before the ball came mm -hmm. loose. Second down. All right. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we're going to find out. Take a look. See for ourselves. I don't think he was down. That ball is out. Was that ball is out. They need to whistle this. Question. Yeah, maybe forward progress, but they ruled him down, not forward progress. It is officially a moot point. Wirtz on the rollout, and Nave got his paws on it again. Well, Nave's got to come up with one. A couple of them hitting him right in the hands. But King was not down at whatsoever. So. If, if you say that at forward progress it, it whistled him, you know, it stopped the play, that's different. But saying he was down, I think the replay officials should have taken a look at that. Well, either Wayne Winkler misspoke or, or you're correct. Words up to 144 straight without a pick. He's been awfully close a couple of times. You expect him to put it in the air here? I think so. Third and long, certainly. Look at the cushion at the top. Words King operating as a blocker, and the pass is caught one yard behind the line to gain by Mashad. Nine yards and a Georgia Southern first down. Yeah, and I mean, just the cushion by Thompson is just ridiculously deep on third down. I mean, he can run a hitch, which essentially he did, and he sits down, and it's, he's so deep he can't drive on the ball and get a hand on it. I mean, it's about a 10-yard cushion. You need about, you know, nine or so. And uh, it's just an easy throw and catch. That'll do it for the third quarter. A quarter once again dominated by Georgia Southern in terms of time on the field. But South Alabama gets the only points. 14 to 10 on another home run of a touchdown pass. A 60-yard strike from Johnson to Tolbert. And the Jags lead after three. It's a hot one in Mobile tonight. South Alabama 14, Georgia yes. Southern 10 after three. Kevin Brown, Andre Ware. We did get an explanation from the replay official between quarters on the J.D. King non-fumble. The official explanation, forward progress was ruled. Words will pitch it behind to Najee Thompson. A little bit of a tricky first out play that will go for three. Riley Cole made the play. D.J. Daniels was in there as well. There are a lot of players contributing here for South Alabama's defense. D.J. Daniels, I think, was the, the guy that came flying up to make that stop. Well, we have talked all night long about the time of possession edge, and South Alabama's defense deserves a heck of a lot of credit. Yes, they do. Minus 18 and a half in time of possession. They continue to bend but not break. And they're going to tackle for loss here as Wirtz loses a couple. There is the bandit Riley Cole blowing it up. Yeah, helped out by Nick Mobley, who is just an all-around student athlete. 3.9 GPA, an engineering major, and leads. He came into the game leading this team in tackles. He is uh, He's the bell cow. He's the guy that makes it work and starts with him. He calls all the signals. 12 tackles tonight after a 10 tackle game on Saturday. And another one of those guys that started his career as a walk-on. Mm -hmm. Words only a rush of two, and Words air mails it to the sideline. Fourth down coming up from the South Alabama 41. I'll tell you what, I mean, you look at, go back to that time of possession graphic, and, and two big shots have the lead, but this defense deserves a lot of credit the way they're playing. They've held down Georgia Southern on third down to a three for 12 mark. Ooh. On a fourth and nine, Georgia Southern will punt. Beck 
Last one went into the end zone. So does this one. Just a net of 21 yards. The punting game has not been good for Georgia Southern tonight. With the Jags in front by four. 243 it is Saturday night, Melbourne, Australia. Our main event on pay-per-view features the champ and the hometown hero Robert Whitaker against the interim champ Israel Adesanya in a middleweight championship unification bout. Starting at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. The prelims kick off at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN2, ESPN Deportes. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash EPV. First down and a run for Trey Minner and the best first down play of the game outside of the 75-yard touchdown. It's a run of six yards for Minter. And if it wasn't for A.J. Watkins, he might still be running. And he's got him right around the shoelaces and he picks his feet up and it could be a, a sprint to the end zone. Tough night for, for Minter. 10 for 36 on the ground, one of those from 20. Minner again looking for the edge. He is planted. Terrific tackle, Kendrick Duncan. And the sophomore safety picks up a loss of two. Just trying to keep his Georgia Southern defense honest. And here we are in another third down and long situation for a young quarterback and see Fitz Johnson. South Alabama, Andre, has not had a drive longer than three plays in this game, the two touchdowns came on the first and third play. They're 0 for 6 on third. Who knows if that's ever happened in the modern era. This is a third and six. Johnson under pressure, dangerous pass, and incomplete intended for Tolbert with Vildor in coverage. And it hung in the air for so long because he was getting pressure lucky not to have that one go the other way. That is 10 possessions of three plays or less for the Jags. And it's just tough, Kevin, to go about your business when uh, you're not just throwing hitches, slants, something easy for the quarterback, just to get the ball out and keep a defense honest. Whenever you're, you're passing, it's something deep down the field, and he's always just living in third down and long. Well, here's the worst punt of the night for Brooks. It takes a Georgia Southern bounce, and the Eagles will have great field position. Just a kick of 29 from the previously flawless Brooks. A September to remember in college football is set up quite in October. The top four, Bama, Clemson, the national champs, Georgia, Ohio State. LSU, Oklahoma, Auburn with a big game in the swamp this Saturday in Wisconsin behind them. That next tier down, just how good are Florida, Penn State, and Iowa? Are they playoff contenders? Some surprises from the Power Five. Wake Forest leading the way there. And then App State out of the Sun Belt among the great teams. The four unbeatens in the group of five. 18 unbeaten teams after one month of college football. We have your tiers, Andre Ware, we'll yeah. get to at some point among those top 18. And all are undefeated. I'm assuming it's Wake Forest 1, Southern Methodist 2. Oh, we'll wow. find out. Planting words, a big hit. The ball popped loose. J.D. King, beg your pardon, Wesley Kennedy recovered. It was Keith Goldman who just blew up that play for a major loss. He came flying out of the secondary, and he is not afraid to fill the alley. And the coaches talked about him this week. And the job that he had to do, he welcomed it. I'll tell you what, that is textbook right there, my friend. Steve Campbell wanted him at Central Arkansas. Campbell got the job here. He got Gallman out of Mobile. Played as a true freshman last year, making a major impact as a sophomore. Diamond formation here in the backfield. And LaRoche gets a yard. Look like Trey Young right around the football. Again, along with DeShazer in there as well. And another long yardage situation here on third down. Really three for 12 in the ball game. Now this one is just play zone and, and tackle you in front a, of you. Do you have a play call for third and 17? Uh, you've messed up the first two. I don't have 
anything for third and 17. A rush of three. Words is sacked. Guess who? Jeffrey Watley, big 99, sack number two and a half on the year. Oh, and I had a good time talking with the big fella yesterday. He was ready for this one and said, hey, I got to play the run. It's a different type of game where I got to I kind of sit along the line of scrimmage, read my keys, but once I see that pass drop, I know I can cut loose. It's an excellent job of getting to Wirtz. Told us his career goal is to be a principal, wants to work on a master's in administration. Wow, Beck got hit late after the punt. The flag is out. Men are on the return. The question, what kind of foul is this going to be against Anthony flag. Beck? the lesser of the two I would assume I think you're right but we'll find out big call coming from Wayne Winkler this is the running into you got to give him an area to come down Running into here. the kicker. Yeah. Receiving team. That penalty is declined. First half. Tested Myers, the redshirt freshman, with the penalty. So only running into the declined penalty. It's because of where the football is inside the 20 yard line. All right, let's get to your tiers now. We have 18 unbeaten teams. Here are your top eight. This is in order, correct? Yeah, and this is in order. Alabama, this is how I would rate teams uh, right now. Alabama being uh, the top. Ohio State ranked number four, but I think they're playing some of the best football in the country. Clemson with a little hiccup last week. They were able to hang on so you, you don't drop them. LSU, certainly Georgia, Oklahoma, Auburn, and Wisconsin to round it out. But the job that they have done at LSU with Joe Burrow and changing the offense is just, it, it's unbelievable. And Georgia and it, Southern it, it saw it. One. Yes, it fits what they want to do. How many years have we talked about receivers that come out of LSU and they don't catch a lot of passes? Now all of a sudden, they're going to get more of them because of the offensive change by Ed Orgeron. 55-3 was the week one score LSU over Georgia Southern. That is a culture-changing uh, alteration, so to speak, in, in terms of offensive scheme. Joe Brady to run the pass game. Joe Burrow to throw it. Flag is down on the first down run by Minner and some extracurriculars behind the play. Yeah, oh, going at it. Pushing and shoving between some linemen. Raymond Johnson involved for Georgia Southern with a left tackle, Jacob Shoemaker. Yeah, I think Shoemaker is going to get called for a hold. And so all this is coming back. The flags were on the ground long before the scuffle took place. Coach Campbell just doesn't want the clock stopping. This, he wants he wants that clock to run. It's playing freeze tag, Coach Campbell. Holding. Offense number 71. Ten yard penalty. Replay second down. Roy Albritt in the right guard. Steve Campbell is incensed about something. I don't know Holy. if there are any lip readers here. Don't know what coach is saying right now. He wants a, a personal foul because all of the extras with Raymond Johnson, but he's not going to get it. The holding penalty is going to stand up here. And so now with a young quarterback and Cephas Johnson, and protect the, the football. To the 10 yard line for the lead. Second you down put the sound off, 17. though. It just looks like a lot of charades on the sideline. <laughs> But you, you certainly want to protect the ball here. You can't make a mistake at your 10-yard line. You want to end this thing with a with a kick of some sort. Here's Minner, second and 17, and a flag comes from the back. And another holding penalty. This may be declined. Offense number 77. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Now, it, would, you, would you decline or accept that? Because it's going to be about a third and 16 if you decline the penalty. 
It'll yeah. still be second down here. I think you have confidence in your defense. Go ahead and take the penalty. Um, because you allow for more downs for a mistake to happen. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, they did decline it. They did decline it. I now disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so third and very long, and this is just a, like you said, don't throw an interception, yep, right? This is a handoff, and let's punt the football. Unless you think you're going to hit another 60 or 75 no, no. yard pass play. Because no, 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 you got to hold it. You got a young quarterback holding the football, and a, and a good pass rusher in, in Raymond Johnson on the other side who's got his in, ears pinned back right about now. Johnson. Uh, the first design draw of the game. He's yeah, hit by a couple of Georgia Southern players, Ty Phillips and Rashad Burke. That's a good call. You get the snap, and he is right up the field. Protect the football is the message that you tell him before the snap. And now let's punt and play defense. We need a boomer here by Jack Brooks, the 26-year-old freshman. If nothing else... Wesley Kennedy's got to at least catch this punt, right? You don't want another 15-yard oh, yes. bounce after the kick. Brooks has punted for a total of 306 yards. In the face of the rush, he gets well, he it away. One there. What a kick! Kennedy back to his 35. Wesley Kennedy makes a couple of defenders miss, and a nice job on the return to get about six or seven yards after a kick of 51. Well, he hit a monster right then. What a night for Wagga Wagga, Australia. At the 2016 census, Wagga Wagga in the Riverina region of New South <laughs> Wales, Australia, had a population of more than 54,000. And uh, I don't think any of the other 53, 999 have the right foot of Jack Brooks, or at least half of it. Eight punts, he's been brilliant. His offense keeps giving the ball back on punts, but the defense has made the lead hold up. Mm. And Wurtz is nearly intercepted again. That's about the third time he's almost been picked, and Keith Goldman had his hands on a diving try here. Yeah, this Nave had his hands on two of them, and then Goldman right there almost made Wurtz pay the price. And the streak continues with consecutive passes without an interception. But, boy, they have – it's been by the – it's the narrowest of margins. Second worst passer rating in the country by team for Georgia Southern. Only Northwestern worse coming into tonight. Here's Murray with some yards after the catch, his fourth grab of the game. And it's another third down coming up for Georgia Southern, which is three of 13 on third downs tonight. Yeah, they tried to come out and, and open things up across the middle, throwing the football a little bit to soften this defense up where they're not playing so run heavy. And now third down and long once again. They've run 65 plays to South Alabama's 30. Six and a half, I call it, go ahead and call it third and medium. Words fires, incomplete, and once again, nearly intercepted. That was Jalen Thompson undercutting the route. And the difference there is that he sensed the, the hitch route and played better in terms of pre-snap alignment. He wasn't so deep as he was earlier in the ball game. So it gave him a chance to drive on the football. He saw Mashad pull up, and he had a nice break. Should have had an interception there. And Punta Palooza will continue. 22 total possessions tonight, 13 three and outs. South Alabama has three first downs in the game and leads. Anthony Beck, the second, will punt again. And we'll wait before that punt. There's a flag down. Not sure they got it off in time. Yeah, play clock's at zero. That's not a good sign, generally. It just gives him a little more room to Delay of avoid game. the touchback. Kicking yeah, team. well, to Five down it inside penalty. the 10-yard line. Down. And if I'm South Alabama, I would never, I would never take that penalty. Because it just, you know, you, you, you make the punter more, a little more comfortable when you back him up. 
Well, standing at the 26. Beck will kick it. No pressure in his face. Fair catch, Minner. And he will let it bounce. Grabbed at the 26-yard line. If you like punts, you came to the right place, folks. There's plenty of them, hadn't they? Hadn't there? Well, what a night defensively for South Alabama, which has shut out the Eagles in the second half. Tried to go over the top. They play good defense. Guys fill in the alley. When you're in one-on-one -on -one situations, they're making tackles in the open field, causing fumbles. They haven't been able to come up with one, but a couple of balls on the ground, a few interceptions that should have been made that may have gone through the hands of defenders. Johnson loading up again. He has Baker all alone on first down. It's the same song repeated for a third time. A deep shot for South Alabama, which has no other passing game, but hits a 43-yarder. Yeah, and they're thinking that they're going to run the football with Dre Menner on first down. Well, the play action holds everybody, as it has the, pre the previous two times he went deep. And hey, what, when you get a few of these in a game, you'd like to hit on, on all of them. He's just about done that tonight. And Monquavian Brinson, who made the tackle, is down. The all-conference corner for Georgia Southern. Oh, and there should be a safety right in the middle of the field. And some way, somehow, Kendrick Duncan keeps his eyes in the backfield a little bit too long, not seeing the receiver on the outside in single high coverage. And South Florida, excuse me, South Alabama's making them pay. There's a look at Brinson, a senior out of Atlanta. 37th career start. The ref mic works. We can confirm that. So 6-13 to go. Brinson down with the Georgia Southern team. And the trainers over by him on their sideline. Yeah, second team all Sun Belt the last two years. He had five interceptions in 12 games played in 2017. So you just hope that uh, he can he can bounce back from this setback. He's a good foot good football player. Let's take another look at his tackle. He's just right at the end after Baker reels it in. He comes into the screen. Really not sure what. What happened? This looks like a routine tackle and just couldn't get up. It's a hard finish to the play, a yeah. hard hit to the ground. And maybe the helmet contacted the turf. We're going to step aside. Yeah. Tonight after Temple ECU, Bucci and Anderson have Sports Center. John and John on ESPN Rams Seahawks post game reactions. Why trusting the process could pay off this season and why Florida's defense will be Bo Nix's greatest test in the swamp. Sports Center after college football, ESPN and the ESPN app. Uh, Monquavius Brenson was just helped off the field. He had to be lifted up and carried off this is a really scary thing to see Brinson elevated yeah. off the sideline again we don't know what was hurt and right into the injury tent on the sideline and he's out and South Alabama has it from the 31 Johnson another shot and Kendall Vildor is in on the coverage against Baker to set up second and ten. When he had Tolbert. Tolbert ran a post corner, and he fooled everybody. Everybody went inside to the post, and he goes back outside to the corner, but Johnson never looked that way. I mean, he's, all the coverage is looking in the middle, and you see Tolbert on the other side of the field just wide open. Third play of the drive, a handoff to Minner. Into the middle, Trey Minner. And for the first time tonight, South Alabama will run a fourth 
play of a particular drive. <laughs> and and man, with under six to go in the fourth, they've never run a drive longer than four plays in eight. It's amazing how that works when the when the passing game all of a sudden starts to click a little bit. Now all of a sudden the running game follows it and you're able to stay on the field a little bit longer. I mean, maybe you just had two and three play drives 30 years ago and you hung 95 on SMU, a but a at some point late in the game, you probably had a five or six play drive. 12 minutes. <laughs> bite on that for a little while. 0 for 8 on third down tonight. It's a handoff to Minner and it's 0 for 9 as he stood up for no gain. And a field goal here would put a lot of pressure on Georgia Southern. Instead of, they're going to need a, a, a touchdown anyway with being down by four. But it is, that makes it a tough, tough road to come back from. Well, the pressure is now on the first-year starter, Frankie Onate, the redshirt sophomore. Three of three on the year. His long from 36. This one from 45. And it's pretty good field position with a miss. Georgia Southern has a field goal block this year. They don't get to this one. And Onate makes it a seven-point lead. Plenty of leg. No problem. And time ticking down. About 424 left here in the fourth quarter. And Georgia Southern is now... And a pickle steps into that one. Ooh. Jesse Liptrot almost got it off the edge, and it was right down the middle. I think it more along the lines of maybe running into the kicker. You won't. You wouldn't take the the points off the board, but well, he hit that. One. That was a that was beautifully struck. Career long field goal and a good time for it for the sophomore out of Trinity Christian Academy in Jacksonville. So it's touchdown or bust at this point for Georgia well, Southern. And now you're going to ask your defense once again to come through for you. Saturday Night Football this week presented by Wells Fargo. Can anybody slow down Ohio State? Mm. Michigan State has a pretty good defense. We'll see. They get their shot at the Buckeyes in the shoes. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, ABC, and the ESPN app. You know, Justin Fields just kicked the door in on the Heisman race. He says, hey, I'm, I'm here. Let me into this thing. Over 20 total touchdowns, no picks. Guajardo with a short kick, and it bounces out of bounds. A uh, big mistake. On the kickoff by South Alabama. Yeah, you don't want to give up any field position, and you can't afford to have something like that happen. Ball's going to come all the way out to the 35-yard line. So Saturday night, Ohio State, you have them as the number two team in the country. Right now, they're number four. Yeah. They've beaten Cincinnati by 42, Indiana and Nebraska each by 41 on the road. These numbers are staggering for Justin Fields and the Buckeyes. I mean, he just looks so comfortable in what they're doing. Everybody thought, well, he's going to run until he got himself settled into the offense. And he's been just as effective as a passer. Tied for the longest streak of 40-point wins ever in the AP poll era. Four straight games won by 40 or more. Meanwhile, second and 10 after no gain. Sean Brown, the stop on J.D. King as we tick down to four minutes. Georgia Southern has not scored in the second half. Yeah, big Sean Brown's the leader of the, the defensive line. He's played a heck of a game up front. Option play for Wirtz. Shy Wirtz on the keeper. Rumbles for the first down. And that quick, when you give up leverage, you give up a big play to an offense like this. They block so well on the edges that it allows Wirtz to turn the corner and a long way from the finish line. About three and a half minutes left and plenty of time for Georgia Southern with two timeouts. A new conference rivalry completely dominated by Georgia Southern. An average score of 42 to 9 over the first five meetings. Trying to win that tonight is South Alabama. 27 touchdowns to four coming into tonight in these games. 
King to midfield, slipping tackles, and, and J.D. King nearly has a first down. The guys aren't wrapping up. They're throwing their bodies, and you know, King's too big and too strong. Put together at 5'11", 220, you're not going to throw your body into him and have him fall. So you got to come up under control, the make sure you, you get down. hands on him, wrap him up. There's a couple of misses, and doesn't phase him. And you're giving up chunk plays to a team that you know, can can bleed you and bleed the clock down. Down near two and a half, down by a touchdown. It's LaRoche breaking a tackle and running for about 12 more yards after contact. Speedy LaRoche out of bounds after 16 with a Georgia Southern first down. And starting to put together their best drive in quite some time is Georgia Southern. Chunk plays because of missed tackles. And it looks like, and I don't, you know, you hate to go there, but it finally looks like the time of possession and the amount of plays that this South, South Alabama team has been on the field is starting to take its toll. 70 to 34, the play advantage for Georgia Southern. And they wear him down to find Pater. Wirtz, blocker on the outside. He got a big block from his tight end. Wow. Down to the five yard line as he was sprung free by Cam Brown. How big is that field goal now? That. Young man just knocked in for, for South Alabama. Frankie O'Nate. I mean, just stretching things out. Excellent blocks. You don't have to throw knockout blocks, but just get, just occupy a guy. And that allows the play to extend itself. And with Wirtz, his speed, he turns it into a big play. After a run of 22, Wirtz gives it to King. And J.D. King gets maybe a yard in the middle as we tick under 90 seconds. Boy, somebody delivered a shot. I think it was McWilliams who came in and, and basically turned King around. And King comes out of the game hobbling. We need a goal line stand. This is the time. Lone back is Kennedy, two tight ends left. Under a minute from Mobile. Timeout. Taken by South Alabama. Probably a smart one with 55 Timeout. seconds left. And South Alabama. The tired defense, give them a little rest. Six play drives, 61 yards, all on the ground for Georgia Southern. Well, South Alabama has had some ugly losses this year in terms of margin of defeat. 42-6 to Memphis, 35-3 to UAB. They lost by Monroe, uh, by 13 to Monroe on Saturday. This is a needed get-right win for one of these teams. And at 1-3 and three and 1-4, and four respectively, want to get to a bowl game, this is probably a win you have to have either way. Game of Troy coming up in 13 days. App State after that. You want to get six wins. You want to drive for six. You need this. And you need good defensive line play here for your South Alabama and something good to happen if you're Georgia Southern. Wesley Kennedy plunging Close. forward. Kennedy stretches to the one-yard line. Wesley Kennedy on the carry. And time will continue to tick with two timeouts remaining for each team. Well, we haven't seen the big fella, Logan Wright, in quite some time. I'm not sure if his status if, he's, if he went out with an injury or not but this would be the time uh, that that he could affect the game aj DeShazer made the hit kennedy and king in the backfield third and goal for the one words option pitch kennedy has the corner of the end zone and georgia southern is an extra point away from the tie with one of the better kickers in the country and tyler bass to tie this baby up. A, a, a field goal blocked earlier in this game. Any question about going for one here? I don't know. I think, I think uh, you go for it, tie the game up, and take your chances in overtime. Tyler Bass to tie it. 
Execution clean. And Bass boots it through, and we're 17-17. What a drive. Eight plays, 65 yards after the kickoff out of bounds. Nice job by Wirtz working the option, getting the defense to bite up. Kennedy is there. They stretch it out, but nobody to save leverage. And Kennedy basically walks in untouched, Kevin. Well, what a weapon Georgia Southern missed the first four games without Kennedy, an all-conference performer last year. Missed the first four games for academic reasons. And tonight, 52 yards on eight carries and a touchdown, plus a 24-yard catch. So assuming Bass does what he does and kicks it out of the end zone here, is, is this a kneel down spot? 20 seconds to go? I don't think so. You want to try to I didn't get think one in you, the air? I didn't think they nailed it. You should have nailed it down to, to end the first half to get out of here. But you, know, you got 20 seconds. You got to try to, to do something with it. A big pass, something where you, you know, maybe a hook and ladder, anything. South Alabama only has 10 players on the kick return team right now. They just got an 11th out late. Campbell's trying to get a timeout. Now they get the 11th one off the sideline late. They had nine for a while. A little bit rattled perhaps after the touchdown. A lot of tired players right now. Bass. Minter from the back of the end zone. He's going to give it a shot. And Minter is spun down. Yeah, I would have had him stay in the end zone where I get the full 20 as opposed to 15 seconds. Time now to take a look at tonight's best performer brought to you by AT&T. Couple of long touchdown throws for Cephas Johnson. Yeah, over the top to, to Baker to start the scoring for South Alabama. They come back to Tolbert. He gets behind the secondary. Eight completions and 194 yards. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna take it to overtime. Yeah. yeah, with this type of field position, that changes the dynamic. You get the ball, you keep men are in the end zone, you get it with 20 seconds at the 25. That's a different story, but down around your 10, young quarterback, you don't want to make a mistake. Give this ball game away. This is the end of regulation. What a bizarre 60 minutes it's been. We need more. Maybe we'll see another punt in overtime. 17-17, Georgia Southern and South Alabama in a must-win game on a Thursday night. Back at 30. Would you rescue me? Welcome back to Mobile, Alabama. 17-17 after 60 minutes. Four quarters, not enough. Georgia Southern and South Alabama. If you see one of these teams in a bowl game this year, it will likely be the winning team in this game. South Alabama could fall to one and five. Georgia Southern to one and four. The loser starts 0 and two in Sunbelt play. The winner one and one. And for Georgia Southern, this is the softer part of the schedule, which has some really difficult games coming up. Overtime rules. As a refresher, in case you haven't seen it this year, coin toss to choose whether you're on offense, defense, at the end of the field. Usually you're going to play defense Usually first. Usually you're going to play him. Yeah. Each team gets one possession for the 25. New rule this year, starting with a fifth overtime, alternating two-point conversions will replace offensive possessions. So if we get that far, we're not going to get into LSU, Texas A&M sort of drama. And there are mandatory rest periods if we get to overtimes two and four. Did you play overtime in no. uh, college? No. You won by too much? Long time. I <laughs> never played an overtime game in college. What do you think it's like on the South Alabama sideline with all the plays they've been out I think they're reeling right now. Go? And I think when you look, you go back and look at that Georgia Southern drive, the way... They went about their business, big chunks of yards. That's a sign of a defense that is that is worn down. He just wondered when it was going to happen because they played so well for so long. 
74 total plays run by Georgia Southern to 35 for South Alabama. We don't hear the coin toss. We'll have to see the results. Looks like South Alabama won the toss. You would assume they chose to defend first. South Alabama has won the toss and has chosen to go on defense. Our assumption we'll correct. The series on that end of the field. All right, there's Wayne Winkler, our referee. So you start on defense, so you have the advantage of knowing what you need. Unfortunately for South Alabama, that means the defense gets right back on the field. Right back on the field against an offense that has gotten razor hot. Time of possession. And if you just joined us, here are some of the highlights. A blocked yes. field goal off the foot of pass, and then this first of two long touchdowns. And then over the top for the touchdown to Baker. Got it started. Georgia Southern came back. Kennedy gets himself close to the end zone. It set up King for the their first touchdown run. In the second half, they come back to Tolbert on a big play over the top. Same play, opposite side. Kennedy gets himself in the end zone, and that's that basically puts us in the overtime situation here. South Alabama has just four first downs in the game. The fewest first downs for a winning team since 2000. Arkansas had five and a win over UNLV in 01. So Georgia Southern with the ball first. J.D. King stretching for a gain of four on first down. And guys just aren't wrapping up right now. He is running through tackles and falling forward for about four yards. Met at the line of scrimmage, but falling forward. And you talk about time of possession. It's almost two to one. And how can you not be a worn down defense under those circumstances? I haven't seen Logan Wright in a long time. Kennedy and King again flanking Wirtz. Wirtz spins inside. It's third and short coming up. The tackle made by A.J. DeShazer, the Rover. And what a play this is because if Georgia Southern is stopped, it would be a difficult decision for Chad Lunsford. Oh, where's, I think you go, you call him right back to J.D. King, the physical runner inside in this situation. Here's the bobsled. But the tight end, Cam Brown, is the third man. Wirtz on the option. Brown is a blocker. And Wirtz has just enough. He needed three. He got four before the tackle by Kelvin Johnson and a Georgia Southern first down. Well, and a nice hesitation by Wirtz to allow the defense to, to take a false step. And he goes right behind him to, as you mentioned, just pick up enough. A false step. They get outside, and that allowed him to turn up the field and pick up the first down. When he's second first out of the game, leads to a run by J.D. King yeah, gonna, inside the tent. You're going to turn to your bruiser right now, and that's J.D. King with Logan Wright out of this game. It's it's become J.D. King to inflict your will, turn the game over to the offensive line to lean on a, a tired defensive front, and then you got the bulldozer and King coming right downhill at the front of your defense. A run play for King. He is hit at first. Got a second surge. He's close. He's short, just shy of the first down marker. And they've since gone away from Mobley, who they hadn't had a tackle since the third quarter. He had 12 tackles early on in the third and has been quieted since. Third and a yard back to King. I go right back to him again, third in the yard. There's no doubt about it. Eight in the box. King into the box and stood it. up. He looks like he's got the first down to the four. And if King, but there is a flag carry. down on the near sideline. Oh boy. We do have a flag on the play. It's usually lining up in the neutral zone. Or somebody made illegal glitch. formation. Oh boy. The offense had more than four players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. 
We play third uh, down. For a night where there have not been many penalties, only three accepted on each team, that is a crusher. Two off, all three guys, five in the line on, in the backfield. No one on the line of scrimmage, and that that certainly hurts. And a timeout taken. Chad Lunsford takes his only timeout of this period before third and six. That is a big time mistake. No, no question about it. They were all well off the line. How much does this change the play call? Do you throw it here? Do you put it in Wirtz's hands on yeah, third think, and six? I think they're still going to work the triple option where they, they just allow Wirtz to read it out. If, if King is there, he gives it because you can come back. If you get it close enough, you're going to go for it on fourth down. Uh, if not, pull it and work the edges with the speedy uh, Kennedy as a pitch man. Remember, this is the first possession of the first overtime. South Alabama gets the ball next. Steve Campbell trying to fire up his troops. Yeah, you have got to have a solid play right here if you're South Alabama and you need this uh, the triple option to work to perfection right here if you're Georgia Southern. Matt LaRoche is a lone running back. No king. No Kennedy. Words will throw it after faking the run. Now on his feet, and Words flips it, and it's dropped by LaRoche. Might have been above the line of scrimmage anyway. He was awfully close to it. Right. Either way, it's a fourth down coming up. You gotta get you gotta kick the field goal here because you got nothing on third down. And they got about gotten about half of it. I would have said, yeah, go go ahead and roll the dice and go for it, but they try to make it look like option and then a little pass. And this one just a little bit short of LaRoche. Not sure if he could have run for it to the five. There was a defender in the way. And a stoppage before this field goal try from Bass. Once the passer was behind the line of scrimmage, yep. the previous play is on the further review. So this could be a penalty. This could be some extra yardage pushed back. Could be an illegal forward pass, and our replay official Terry Walters wants a look. Oh, that's also down to go along with it. So with some added yardage, just maybe making it a tough, a tougher field goal attempt. So the line of scrimmage about the ten and a half. And I don't think uh, Tyler Bass is going to have any problem. You get across midfield, he's he's kind of the Steph Curry of kickers, where you cross half court, you're in range. You cross midfield, you're in his range. And you need indisputable evidence. I, th I think this is going to be overturned, Andre. Looks like Wirtz is across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it felt like that when he when he let it go. And I think you're absolutely right. He's inside of the 10-yard line when he let it go. And the down marker is right about the 10 and a half. Yep. It's close. Technically, it was fourth down from the 10. It is close. And what you don't see here is the line of scrimmage. Now things have worked out for Coach Campbell, you know what you need to do here on your first possession. Right. You wonder if... After further review, the passer was beyond the line of scrimmage when he passed the ball. Yard penalty and a loss of down, fourth down. So, again, you have Tyler Bass, who's a brilliant kicker, yeah. but it's going to push him back considerably. Uh, I think he, he is still well within his range. Lunsford told us his range is about 55 yards. He's comfortable there. He was it was easily going and still climbing at 55 in, in uh, pregame warm-up. So attack on the five yards. This will be from 32 to put Georgia Southern on the board in overtime. 
And off the right foot of Bass. It is no good. He hooked it to the left. Nothing automatic in this game. And when I was playing as much as I loved Roman Anderson at Houston, I never wanted to put the game in his hands. If I could avoid it. And he was about as automatic as they got. But this one just comes off plenty of distance. It never crawled inside the upright, just left of it. South Alabama will take over their possession. In so now, what a stand by South Alabama. It's just a field goal needed. And remember, Georgia Southern had the first down before the illegal formation penalty. Maybe the five-yard penalty does make a difference after the fact. The Jags need a field goal to win, yeah. and Minner gets knocked backwards on first down. And this is, if I'm Cephas Johnson, I'm talking to the offensive line, hey, I need your best effort right now. We got to get, we cannot go backwards in this drive. We're going to use Trey Minner and, and just kick a field goal and get out of here, but we don't want to make it a long field goal attempt or longer than it needs to be. So I need some push. Give him some some room in which to operate. From here, this would be 43. Frankie Onade has hit from 45, and here comes a flag. Well, this is just discipline in the tired football team. Ball start. Got to bear down right Offense, now. Offense number 73, five-yard penalty, still second down. The left guard Hayden Merchant will push South Alabama back five, and now you're at a 48-yard attempt. This is turning into the cheese it bowl. Oh boy. <laughs> Penalty moves the ball back to the 31-yard line. Or a Record-setting number of interceptions thrown in that game, isn't it? Yeah, we're not quite there, wow. I suppose. Johnson looking to throw it. Mitters in the area, and Johnson throws it out of bounds. Third down coming up. He is only seeing one side of the field because Tolbert was standing on the far side, wide open, as, as he faded away. And that's the last thing you want is a quarterback on his back foot throwing into coverage. He'll go back to the same play, give him the same look, and just hit Tober along the sideline. You get yourself a closer field goal attempt on fourth down. This would be a career long for 0-8 from 48. It's a draw play Minner, and he at least gets some of it back to the 28, so this will be about a 45-yard kick for is, Frankie 0 It's what he hit earlier. That was the field goal to give South Alabama a seven-point cushion late in the fourth and Georgia Southern does not have a timeout to ice him and it just proves the discipline by both teams you got to have it in critical situations Frank like this in the overtime a you get yard field goal. a penalty for Georgia Southern making it a longer field goal Bass misses and then a false start creates this situation here is Onate for the win it is blocked the kick is blocked, and we play on in Mobile. Wow. There were a whole bunch of hands up there for Georgia Southern. Yeah, you're thinking that you'd gotten yourself an opportunity, a negative play on first down, a false start, backs you up farther, and it just tremendous penetration. Not sure of a number. There are hands everywhere. There was 96 Phillips in there, 5 Jay Bowdry on the top. I think it ended up being Bowdry. No score after one. Let's play two. Seventeen, seventeen. after the first overtime, a missed field goal for Tyler Bass, a blocked field goal off the right foot of Frank Yonate. Ty Phillips has been credited with the block. Raymond Johnson was in there as well. Whoever's hand did get it, it was got. So Cephas Johnson hit as he throws. The ball comes loose. It is picked up by Georgia Southern. As it stands, that would be a turnover, and Georgia Southern would need points to win it. Randy Wade got in there to force it, and Raymond Johnson picked it up.
So whether or not Raymond Johnson got the block of the field goal, he picks up the fumble recovery and pending review. Georgia Southern will have the ball, needing points to yeah, win. You're going to take a look at this. He gets hit right as the ball's coming out. You could you could say I, I actually think his hand, his arm's coming forward. So I think it's going to going to be South Alabama's football. It's boy, that's close though. I, I think that low. I'm not sure the arm's coming forward yet. As he's bringing it up, it's all part of the motion. Play will be reviewed. Once again, Terry Walters, our replay official. And we may have a third consecutive drive to start overtime without a point. Raymond Johnson has played one heck of a After ball. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's Georgia Southern's ball, first down. All right, the referee's mic did not work there, Wayne Winkler, but he did say the call's confirmed. Yep. Fumble, turnover, and Georgia Southern once again can win it with a field goal. Call it a play. First one turnover of the game. Recovered by Georgia Amazingly. Southern. And here's Georgia Southern needing three for the win. Georgia Southern will now go on offense. First and 10 on the 25. You just want to protect the football here, Kevin. And give Tyler Bass another opportunity. Hard to believe you would miss again. J.D. King in the backfield. Wirtz sticks it in his belly. Georgia Southern, this is a team that had fumble issues to start the year. They fumbled the ball 13 times. Yep in the first four games. Tonight they have played a clean game in terms of holding on to the ball. That's your major concern here. It really is, and right now you're gonna go with the sure-handed guys. That's why J.D. King is in the ball game right now. Tonight it's featured three missed field goals, two of them blocked. Don't wanna take anything for granted. The Oklahoma State transfer J.D. King to the 20 to set up third and five. A tackle made by Kelvin Johnson. And I would give it to him again right here. Kelvin Johnson on the tackle. And there's an injured Georgia Southern player. Officials timeout for injured Georgia Southern player. Not sure the number. It's Drew Wilson, the right tackle, yeah. who's replacing... Their best offensive lineman, Brian Miller, who dislocated his hip in camp. And Wilson's done a fabulous job playing for Miller, and he is back up on his feet. Yeah, coaching staff told us he's uh, kind of the most consistent football up front. It's amazing that he's playing, period. He's a young man who's had four surgeries to repair a detached retina in his right eye. He is legally blind in the right eye, but uh, doctors have said there is very little extra risk for him in playing football, and they don't know where they'd be without Wilson's presence on the offensive line. He limped off, but didn't didn't really want to come out. And he's got to sit out at least one play here. It's Caleb Kelly is going to take his spot for here on third down. Third down, another handoff to King. And King is covered up. Roxell McWilliams made the play. And once again, we'll have a field goal try in overtime. And now Tyler Bass can walk off with a win. That'll bring up fourth down. Came into this game 10 of 11 and had one blocked. Missed one and an opportunity to, to get out of here with this kick. From 37 yards. None of the other stuff will matter. Tyler Bass on the way, and a Georgia Southern winner. Tucked it inside the left upright, and the Eagles survive a wild Thursday night game in Mobile. Four drives, three points combined in the overtime. Georgia Southern gets them all, and Chad Lunsford's Eagles are two and three, one and one in the conference, and their bowl hopes look exponentially better than before. Chance to, to really go on a winning streak.
for Georgia Southern and get a much needed rest. I haven't played an early early week game or here on Thursday night, but when I snapped the holes down and that baby got up in a hurry and just was true from the very start. And a pretty subdued celebration on a short week with a bit of an aesthetically difficult finish to this game for both sides. But a win's a win, and Georgia Southern can rest. Next game, not for 16 days when they'll host Coastal Carolina. Well, it's just a classic case of time of possession catching up to, uh, to South Alabama. That defense on the field for a very, very long time in a close ball game. We started to see guys tackle with their arms and not bring their bodies and broken tackles and so on and so forth. Georgia Southern rushes for 310. The Eagles win it in overtime. They're two and three, 20 to 17 over South Alabama. Thanks for being with us. What a wild way to kick off what should be a really fun week six of college football for Andre Ware and our entire crew. This is Kevin Brown. So long from Mobile, Georgia Southern still unbeaten against the Jags tonight by a field goal.